Hello everyone, you know me, TOG, and my good old buddy and fellow Metal Gear nerd would be... This guy! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mr. Firebird467, you may know me from such playthroughs as Metal Gear Solid. You may know me from such playthroughs as Metal Gear Solid as well, but today... We're going to Metal Gear it up and talk a little bit late since E3 is already done and we're a little bit behind the times. But still, we're going to talk about Metal Gear Solid Five: The Venom Pain. Yes, this this trailer it makes you a little uneasy, doesn't it? This trailer makes me feel awesome in my pants. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> but yes, the Metal Gear Solid Five: Phantom Pain trailer. Another trailer was shown at E3 2013. Uh, in front of the Microsoft conference, and it had one of the funniest exits in history. I actually did not see that part of the conference. I missed it. So what was the exit? Okay, so after the trailer, they bring out Hideo Kojima. Uh, Kojima's like, Mike, Metal Gear Solid 5 will look great on Xbox One. And then he leaves. <laughs> He's like, I don't care anymore. Leave me alone. That's exactly what happens too. They just they they parade him out in front of the uh, in front of the audience, tell him to say something, and then he leaves. And what's weird is he didn't show up at any other conference after that. He was just like, I got I got to my paycheck. It's pretty weird because you would associate Metal Gear Solid with Sony, but apparently that he didn't show up for that one. Well, that's why it's because. Microsoft felt bit him probably, so as he'd be putting out more advertisement for the Xbox One. But that's neither here nor there, because we're not talking about Xbox One today. We're talking about Metal Gear Solid Five, The Phantom Pain, and how awesome that trailer makes me feel. Yes. Uh, now, like I said, though, the trailer for those of you, if you, I don't know if Professor's going to show this, but uh, if he's going to, don't show it before we don't show it when we start, because. Uh, uh, if you need to know, the trailer is actually kind of graphic in its uh, depictions of, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, violence. It's very gory. It does actually show a woman getting, it does show a woman getting something pulled out of her stomach, as, and they're doing it without anesthesia. It's pretty squeamish. Yeah. So, you know, if you're going to see this trailer, they do warn you ahead of time in the descriptions where you're probably not going to look that you should watch this. But, uh, there... The trailers are rated Peggy 18 and uh, rated M, so you know if you're going to see them, you're going to get fair warning, I guess. So officially, this video is now rated M for mature because I'll be putting, I'll probably be putting that trailer in there. We pull in money, recruits, just to combat cyber. Rubbing our noses in bloody battlefield dirt. All for revenge.
it's not just them. The whole world wants you dead. You'll have to join up with Miller. Build that private army of yours one more time. First, we need to save Miller. He's in Afghanistan. You're a legend in the eyes of those who live on the battlefield. That's why you have to handle this mission yourself. That's how Kaas would want it. Afghanistan is a big place. I expect you'll become quite familiar with those binoculars as you plan your next move. How and where you make it, well that's up to you. Now go! And let the legend come back to life. Yeah. 
calls for wet work, and we answer. No greater good. No just cause. Going even deeper. Take back everything that we've lost. Because I'm already a demon. He mentioned something interesting. Cypher is pursuing new research. He claims that what they're doing in Africa is the missing piece. A weapon to surpass Metal Gear. Yes, but this is the Red Band trailer. If you don't want to see all that squeamish stuff, you can just look at the regular trailer that was shown at E3. Um, but now, anyway, the Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain E3 trailer, 2013 Red Band trailer. Trailer. Um, it does show a little bit more of what we, of what the game is going to be about. Uh, we already knew that uh, it was about Snake uh, waking up from coma. Uh, Kaz was going to be there. You know, everyone was going to make a return, it's apparently kept Eva still. Uh, Ocelot's going to be coming back. Yep. Uh, there's a... Well, okay, there's a lot of new things. I think we should just go in chronological order of what happened in the trailer. Um, to start with... <laughs> to start with, they start the entire trailer after uh, a small little thing with Kaz and Boss, with a lady getting tortured. Yeah. With the same electric, electric, uh, electric poles that uh, Doctor Strange loved using, Peace Walker. Yep. Now, uh, there's a lot to take away from this, and most people have already speculated that uh, a boss and Kaz are watching over this because, uh, you know, I don't know. I've heard speculation that it's because the, they're using those said electric poles, but that doesn't mean that it's just them. I don't know. Yeah, there, there's a lot of speculation to be made in everything within the trailer. Yes, but, um, you know, uh, there's also show, they also show chat. Actually, what's really interesting about this trailer, uh, Kojima has come, has stated on record that if this game does not do well with the audiences and public's public at large, he has to leave the video game industry. Like, because this game has a lot of heavy themes. It has a lot of dark things that have never really been explored in video games before. And if it doesn't do well, if it doesn't fly with audiences, he's going to actually have to leave. And that's not because uh, you know, the video game is going to be too uh, dark and depressing for anyone to handle. No, it's going to be because J the Japanese have a certain thing with their culture where if they fail an audience, if they don't meet the expectations of an audience, they work in a group mentality of if they fail, they failed they, f they just failed across the board, so, you know. It's kind of a <laughs> sentiment, or a throwback to, if you will, seppuku, performing seppuku. Yes, this is essentially Kojima's uh, uh, seppuku moment. If he does not do well with this game, uh, in terms of getting his story across and his message across, he will have to leave the video game industry, and that means no more Kojima games, like, seriously. I would be really sad to see this be Kojima's swan song. I really would. I don't think it will be because I trust him to at least keep the thing. Well, Kojima has, uh, he's actually retweeted a little bit, a lot of things on his Twitter. A lot of them saying how he's not showing anything funny in these trailers anymore. Because in past trailers, he had, he usually had something comedic about them. But in, in these recent trailers, he has not shown a single thing that looked vaguely comedic. He shows a lady getting something pulled out of her chest. Well, her stomach, even. You have to you have to remember this is a game that in essence is being made because the fans of the series wouldn't shut up and would not let him make Metal Gear Solid 4 the final game of the series. So to an extent, I'm thinking he's kind of given the idea or pushing at the idea going, "Okay, you wanted me to continue my vision, then you're going to get it." And this is what it is. 
Now, I know 4 was written from a very uh, annoyed, vitriolic kind of... It was, it was written from a standpoint of, I hate these fans because they make me work so hard in the series that I don't even really want to work on anymore. Because the series was supposed to end with Metal Gear Solid 2. Yes, it was. But, but then people were like, well, Raiden sucks. He sucks hard. We want another game where we actually get someone fun to play as again. We want to be Snake. So, they want to be Snake, so they, he made Metal Gear Solid 3, which was a completely uh, separate entity from the series in terms of uh, a setting. It was basically, if you took all the games in chronological order, it's out of place. It's the very first game in chronological order. It yes, the, the very first story within the Metal Gear Solid series, or just Metal Gear in general. And the issue um, was, it was a huge success, and it is widely believed to be the best out of the entire series, which got the fans screaming again, which is why another Metal sequel. Gear Solid 4. <laughs> they... Admittedly, I would actually want a sequel to a great game if it was going to be better than the original. And Kojima, in that regard, did a way did a much better job in the sequel with Metal Gear Solid 4. He improved on a lot of elements that showed up in 3. At the same time, though, his writing got took a really drastic turn. In past games, there was always a hint of comedy. There was always this underlying tone uh, of, of humor. There wasn't any really serious bits. Uh, well, there were a lot of serious bits, but there weren't anything too serious to the point where it become, became uncomfortable. Metal Gear Solid 4, outside of just the non-serious parts that he puts in the games, because he's still putting his own touch on it, there's humorous stuff to see where you can break off the dick of a statue, for one. There's still humorous little items here and there, but for the storyline in general, in and of itself, it's very freaking depressing. Uh... <laughs> This is spoilers heavy, obviously, but at the end, Snake dies. Well, he doesn't really die. They don't even really explain what happens to him in Rising, which is the sequel of sorts to 4. The continuation of the storyline, but they're following Raiden? Uh, the, the thing is, in, in Rising, they pretty much, uh, they don't even really confirm whether Snake died or if he's still alive. They kind of just leave it vague and ambiguous. Uh, I, the, the general thing is the fans accept that he's dead. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Kojima's one to consistently turn the heads of everyone else in the world. You know, and it's in the future. It has cybernetics. They've proven that they can keep people alive via their brain in that game. So, you know, things like that. But my point is, 4 was a very dark game. It didn't really let you let you up with the depressing elements, you know, Big Boss, he comes back only to tell Snake to live his life at the very end of his life. Uh, Raiden, he abandons his family, abandons his duties as a father. You know, uh, he's pretty much a deadbeat dad. Uh, Otacon, <laughs> Otacon continues his, his, his murderous rampage of every woman he's ever cared about. God, yes, he is the kryptonite for women. It's any sad. Woman, any woman Ocelot ever cares about dies and i will put a spoiler tag at the beginning of this video because obviously we're gonna give them out metal gear solid one sniper wolf dies ocelot in essence loved her metal gear solid two emma dies it's his sister I will argue and that he one cared for moon. her i will argue that one with them to the moon why emma did not need to die well she didn't need to die but she did and, and it's because otakon cared for her metal gear solid four naomi bangs the crap out of Otacon. They like each other. Naomi's like, oh, guess what? I'm dying. I've got only cancer. got like a couple of days left to live due to cancer. Uh, so, oh yeah. boy. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I'm sitting there going, Otacon, if you had had just not slept with Naomi, she she, she would have been fine. She, he, she got cancer from Otacon. She got cancer for having Otacon's dick in her. <laughs> uh, no, I will argue that Emma should not have died because it didn't serve a story purpose. It really didn't. I think it was meant... It was to it was to drive home the point that Otacon's life is shit. It was... I think it was meant to be a character-defining moment for Otacon, but in all honesty, it just seemed unnecessary. It wasn't... He brought Vant back, which no one wanted, because we killed him in a boss fight. He should have died. Nano machines. At the very least, he shouldn't have come back that quickly. His nano machines, fast as they are, should not have done the, not have repaired what Raiden did to him. 
Yeah. Uh, I just, I just think that death was unnecessary. But uh, to continue, uh, Otacon's life is crap. Uh, Naomi's life is also crap. Uh, <laughs> the Colonel is has a has a distant relationship with his niece slash daughter slash whatever. Uh, Meryl. He's Meryl hate. <laughs> he was married to Raiden's wife for a little while. <laughs> but that was that was just a setup. That was a setup. <laughs> but uh, uh, Meryl is distant to Snake because Snake is a distant asshole. And now she's with Johnny. Fuck Johnny. The reoccurring character of the Metal Gear Solid series that no one ever really took much notice of. Uh, Johnny is a main character now. <laughs> and all he used to do was just sit on the crapper. Vamp is back for some stupid reason. And now he's dead again in Metal Gear Solid 4 because they disabled his nanomachines and officially killed him. Eva dies because <laughs> the same thing happens to her again. Yeah. She gets a sharp thing into her stomach. Now, but back to the main purpose of this video. Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, not a history of the Metal Gear Solid series. If I have oh. to do a retrospective on that, I'll do it as soon as I finish my Final Fantasy retrospective, which will be... But eventually <laughs> when is that next part coming out anyway <laughs> not, I, I'm still working on it I haven't had the drive to continue because I don't want to talk about Mystic Quest <laughs> and I know I've... it comes after after Final Fantasy 4 but <laughs> but Metal Gear Solid 5 it's pretty much a continuation of all those dark themes yes it is though I have to ask what are your thoughts behind it becoming an open world game becoming a sandbox now, a lot of fans would scream heresy at that. I personally don't mind it. Well, I know that it could work. For the sole fact, if you play, say, Arkham City, you've played a game that is a sandbox game, very stealth-driven. There's a lot of stealth elements to Arkham City, so you see that it can work within a sandbox game. Yes. Uh, I don't I don't know how it's going to work. Uh, they haven't showed gameplay off that shows a HUD of any sort, so... I don't know how it's going to actually play out. Uh, one of my th my least favorite things about uh, three was the fact that the radar sucks in that game, super hard. But they were trying to be realistic with the radars within the '60s. But it sucks hard. Hey, so I, I don't know. So I don't. Added an element of realism and difficulty to it. So I don't know how they're going to do it with uh, this game. I'm sure they're going to do something, but uh. The trailer does show horse stealth, and uh, I don't know how he saw that guy from that far away. So horse stealth, actually riding in vehicles, coming or just taking vehicles, driving him yourself. All these are things I don't. These are things I don't mind because it makes the gameplay a lot better. It makes the gameplay a little bit more immersive. It makes the gameplay a little bit more deep. And Kojima has come on record as saying that, uh, yes, the game will do a lot more deep. Uh, the stealth will be a little bit more deep than it has been. Uh, there's now shadows, so, you know, shadows will now play a major role in uh, how you uh, stealth. I'm there's honestly, also dynamic CQC! I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how it comes out, because eventually, probably not this year, I will get a PlayStation 4, and that will more than likely be the first game I get for it, is Metal Gear Solid 5. Metal Gear Solid 5 is probably going to be the first game I get when I get a PlayStation 4, more than likely late next year, because it won't be this year. I'll have money for it. Unless someone wants to fund for me to get a PlayStation 4. PayPal counts right here, guys. Yeah, I'll go start a Kickstarter. TOG needs a PlayStation 4. <laughs> oh, I don't record anything for you. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I think, uh, I think the open world can work. I just don't know how they're going to do it. Uh, they showed, like, like I said way back when, they showed a little bit off, a little bit of it off at, uh, uh, what was it? Way back when, I forget. It was a Ground Zeroes trailer. It was 10 minutes long. It was 11 minutes long actually, and they only showed the gameplay around eight minutes in. Uh, and it's, and it showed a little bit of it off. Uh, uh, there were there are different versions of it. Some of them had a guy talking over it with uh, someone else playing. It was very confusing. Ground Zeroes. Uh, it's going to have more. It's going to have the same sort of thing with Phantom Pain, but from what I hear, it's going to be a lot more restricted and linear. Yeah, and they still haven't clarified whether those are on the same disc, whether those are coming together or what. They have not 
actually come out and said that, or whether Ground Zeroes is going to be a digital download when you buy Phantom Pain, or what? They have not. They haven't specified that yet. A uh, Ground Zeroes has not been confirmed as a se- as the same as a part of the game. But then again, Kojima isn't sure what they're going to do either because Konami isn't really. They no one's really sure at Konami what's going to happen with that because. Uh, I'm sure it's going to come packaged with the with the with the main game because it's a, it's supposed to be a prologue and it's supposed to have like one major mission where you have to go in and rescue Chico and Paz. That's about it. I I honestly anticipate it being a digital download. That's what I anticipate. I anticipate you will buy Phantom Pain and with Phantom Pain you'll get a free download for Ground Zeroes. That could work, but I, they could also do a disc thing. Who knows? Uh, but. You know, Ground Zeroes, we don't we still don't know anything about in terms of what it's going to be. Well, we do know what it's going to be about. We just don't know what it's going to be like. We don't. We haven't seen any gameplay for that. We've only we've only really seen more for Phantom Pain. Honestly, I could see it being more of the standard Metal Gear Solid. You're in the area you're in. It's not open world, and you're just going to get Chico and Pa. You're you're going to get them. That's all you're doing. Yeah. You go after you rescue them. It goes out, and I could honestly see the Ground Zeroes ending off with Snake going out into what would be considered the open world, then all hell breaks loose, and this is how it ends up in the coma, which leads dr- straight into Ground Zero, or Phantom Pain. Yeah. And him losing his hand and getting a new hand, which is nice and shiny and red and has a lighter in it. I finally <laughs> remember who that guy was. His name was Galvez. Yep. <laughs> I honestly just... think that's Galvez's hand, and it's going to have a lighter in it. Well... Some people have argued, well, Galvez's hand was Gal- Galvez's robotic hand was his right hand, uh, whereas Boss's is his left. So people are saying, well, maybe they got the designs for it. Maybe they modified it. I don't know. But it is the same sort of hand. Yeah. I'd have to go back and double check. I have Peace Walker HD on my PS3. I need to look again. I've actually seen a lot of, a, a lot of, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, speculation about, uh, the fact that Snake is now using an electronic cigarette, an electronic cigar. Oh, well, electronic cigar. Yeah, when you when you see him uh, standing there smoking his cigar with the with the Secchio, I think it's called Secchio watch being shown. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks electronic. Well, I don't know. I don't know if Kojima is going to be the kind of person to go. That's kind of a minute detail that I don't think Kojima would go. I don't know. The dude's Usually pretty when he, minute. <laughs> when he goes outside of the realms of reality for the time setting, it's usually not something that's so small that it'd be like an electronic cigar. He usually goes big or he'll go home. This is the, You're saying this about the same guy that made sure ice cubes have realistic physics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he is the guy who did that. Now, I... I'm looking at the trailer right now. I'm looking at that really squirmish scene with Paz. Paz. Uh, cause that that girl that is being shown uh, with with getting the thing taken out of her stomach. That is Paz. Yeah, they pretty much confirmed that. I just uh, I just downloaded it off of YouTube so I can throw it into this video somewhere. Uh, it's really squeamish. I w- I will be putting a warning up before it actually plays that hey if you are squeamish. I will tell you to skip from this point to this point, because you do not want to watch the Red Band trailer if you're squeamish. Yeah, uh, it also shows Chico doing something that's very, very scarring. Yeah. He's he's basically holding Paz's guts in, as this other dude is digging into her and getting this thing out of her stomach. It's very... Yeah, yeah, this is going to be an excessively dark game. It's got children, it's got child soldiers, it's got all sorts of crap. Yeah, and actually that thing with the child soldiers, people have speculated a lot on that. They said, oh, it's going to take place in South Africa, where Outer Heaven was founded. Uh, it's going to take place in Liberia, where we can finally meet Raiden as a kid. Uh, it's going to take place... They basically speculated a lot about Africa, and... If I was going to say that he would put it somewhere, it would probably be South Africa, but I wouldn't put it past him to put it in Liberia. Yeah. But do you do you think with the direction he's going to be taking the new Metal Gear, this dark, realistic, realism direction, do you think he's just kind of really pushing the button and going to hurt himself in the long run? I think this is not how he should tackle it, because this is a this is really drastic. Even even four, which was depressing in its own right, 
still had some humorous elements about it. this this game does not look funny in the slightest yeah it, it looks like way too big a departure from what we know and i don't know how people will react to that um which which is like i said if Koji, kojima said if he's if this doesn't work he's leaving the he's leaving the industry so yeah. you know it has to work so he has to do something to make it to keep it within the metal gear uh, metal gear themes and tones without making it seem like he's just completely changing yeah. the theme and setting and you know all that stuff you can't just have metal gear characters and then say well now they're all serious and dark and depressing even though in the last games this is the same big boss that was talking about food like it was this really funny th like this was a dude that was obsessed with food in the 60s yeah but then you, you have to remember that throughout this series between metal gear solid 3 peace walker and now he's had so much happen to him that He's changed. There was a change between Metal Gear Solid 3 and when he founded Outer Haven. I get that. I get that. Really, I do. But, um, it's, it's, it's like it's taking too drastic a tone, like a tonal shift. Like, like I said, 3 was, it was campy. It was funny. It was like, it was the 60s. It was a reference to James Bond and a parody and all that stuff. But it was still had its own thing going on. And then Peace Walker, it was its own thing. But it was actually a lot more lighthearted than some of the other games in the series. In fact, because of its teen rating, they had to cut a lot of stuff out that would be considered dark and depressing. Yeah, actually, that was a decision by Kojima himself to make a T-rated Metal Gear. And I think that has to do with the theme of peace. Like, Kojima didn't want this game to be overtly dark because the whole point of the game is to let peace in the world exist, even if it has to be through nuclear deterrence or whatever, what have you. By the way, they say nuclear deterrence in that game so damn much, <laughs> I'm going to get sick of that goddamn phrase. All, all I can say is I hope Paws survives whatever they're doing to her, pull, whatever they're pulling out of her stomach. I hope she survives that because I like Paws. She's pretty sexy. <laughs> Dude, she's what? No, I'm not saying that because she's total Joe okay. Bates. But <laughs> but I like Paws as a character. I hope she survives whatever they're pulling out of her gut. I'm going to assume she survived. Uh, <laughs> just because have. just because it would be too much risk just to rescue her and make sure she's, she survives getting out of Omega just to have her die. Yeah. That'd, be, that'd be kind of a waste. Uh, but, you know, I think Peace Walker was lighthearted. It was very. It was. It was a lot less dark than the other game. It was much less dark after four. Uh, it. It had a lot of elements of happiness and peace and all that good stuff. It's very entertaining to listen to and watch. Uh, I liked it. I think. I, I think the lighthearted tone fit that game pretty well. It did, but honestly, I'm thinking if Kojima does it right, this will work out for him. Because I. I. I hope. That Metal Gear Solid fans are like me and can accept a darker Metal Gear game because it would fit into the context of the series, especially if this is the part of the timeline that I'm thinking it is, which is the formation of Outer Haven and Big Boss pretty much saying, screw the entire world, they're all a bunch of idiots, and they deserve what's coming to them. Now, the thing with this is, there's been a lot of... Uh... Uh, speculation. I'm assuming on the forums more more than anywhere else. Oh, dude, the Metal uh, Gear Solid forums are crazy right now. There's more speculation than anywhere else. The biggest change to this game that everyone's been focusing on is the fact that David Hayter is no longer the voice of Big Boss, and this is a change I still don't agree with. I don't think it it makes sense on this level of of a business of a business decision. It's it makes sense because you want a high level voice actor now because this game's gonna be needed a lot more. Uh, sales and stuff like that but at the same time it's very underhanded i think the way with the way they did it was very backhanded uh, like a backhanded insult to david Hayter, because they pretty much said you know you can't act you can't act well enough to be this character anymore which i think is an insult because in peace walker i think david Hayter did a pretty good job yeah it is a bit of an insult to david Hayter, but i'm not going to go the route of say the sonic fag route where they get all pissed off because their favorite voice actor is no longer voicing their character. I'm I just... I, no, <laughs> I understand where you're coming from. I get that it's, it's a little... It's very petulant. It's very minute in the long... in the grand scheme of things. But I think from the perspective of a fan that's... I got into the series through 4 and I thought David Hayter did a, a good job despite his, his very 
He's very mucusy voice. <laughs> something like something like that. You couldn't handle the Metal Gear. I think he did it rough. Now, in the first three games, he he needed time to get into the role, and by the second game, I think he did it pretty good. But the third game was really really came into his stride. He he proved he could do serious moments and comedic moments. Um, four is where he really showed off that he was a serious. He could, he could be a serious voice actor if he asked him to. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, his voice is a little unrealistic, but then again, so what? Which, I, I'm ju- I'm not putting out any judgment on the voice acting until I actually play the game and I hear the voice acting in-game. Uh, and, you know, <clears throat> I thought in Peace Walker, he did a good job of being this more... He's he's way more relaxed in uh, Peace Walker than he has been in uh, previous games. Because in previous games, yeah, his, vo- his voice was a... Uh, it was, it was very gruff, and it was very serious, and it was very, you know, I need to get this done, and Metal Gear, and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> You're doing uh, bad, David Hater. <laughs> I know. I, my voice is far too high for me to actually do a decent David Hater impression, but, uh, uh, you know, you get my point, though. Like, David Hater in the previous games was serious, you know? He had a lot more serious uh, things about his voice and his character that he couldn't do this different performance. And then in Peace Walker, he was given the chance to do this slightly more lighthearted, slightly nicer big boss that's very kind to people that he likes. He he totally does these nice things to people. Yeah, he's kidnapping people, but still, it's like it's not like they mind. I, I was amazed that he every time he sent someone up with that Fulton recovery system, I laughed because it was hilarious. <laughs> Want to fly like a bird? Honestly, I I honestly think that to an extent, everything that Kojima is doing is a test of his fans. The fans of the Metal Gear Solid series. He's saying, okay, I'm turning this open world. This is a sandbox now. I'm turning this into a very dark, very serious environment. And I'm changing your voice actor. Are you still willing to sit through with me? I think that's the problem, though, because, yes, David Hayter's voice, unrealistic as hell. You couldn't push it, you couldn't picture that voice on anybody except Solid Snake or Big Boss. You know, you can't really... It's hard to picture this character with that different voice now, and I and I still can't see... Uh, we, we didn't mention it in the last thing, but uh, Kiefer Sutherland was actually heard in the, fan, in the Phantom Pain original trailer back in a... Uh, where was it? It was, it was at the beginning of the year. Kiefer Sutherland was heard as the voice of Ishmael in the hospital... Uh, no one, ever, no one knew who that was, but they pretty much said it was Kiefer Sutherland. The fans did, so he's pretty much. It, people now think it's either a placeholder or you know they're actually going to. He's he's going to switch roles. It's confusing. Point is, Kiefer Sutherland is now the voice of Big Boss in uh, 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 Gr- Phantom Pain, and I think yes, he's a good actor. I like Twenty Four. I think as Jack Bauer, he does a good job. I think in roles in general he can do a, he can do a good job as a as an actor but at the same time he pretty much admitted during that konami pre e3 show that he's never played a metal gear solid game he doesn't really know the character he's just going to be doing what they tell him to do yeah which which i don't think that's the person you want for this sort of role like, well, like even even to that i can go back to something that we're gonna have to go back to the 80s real quick but the original Transformers movie, the animated movie... I'll get your shit out of here. No, no, listen. Unicron was voiced by Orson Welles. Orson Welles openly admitted he did not know what he was even voice acting. He just read the lines. But you go back and watch the original animated movie, and you could not imagine Unicron's voice being anyone but Orson Welles. And this was a guy who never watched Transformers, didn't know what it was, didn't give two craps. He was there for a paycheck, and he left. I, I get that. I get that setting. I get that feeling. But you know, it's a different thing with me because David Hayter's voice is now inseparable. It's like impossible to imagine Solid Snake or Big Boss without David Hayter's voice. I've heard people say they can't, like they they associate David Hayter more with Solid Snake. That, that confuses me because he's voiced all the snakes, except for Liquid and Solidus, obviously. But. Um, I, I don't know. I don't buy Kiefer Sutherland as an as as Big Boss. It's just, 
I can see it's I can see it as working, and I've played the Metal Gear Solid series since they first came out. I played the original on the NES, and I've played both the MSX games. I have been playing it for years. I've played all of them multiple times. I can see it working out. I honestly can. Well, I mean, okay. I know it sounds. I I come off petulant every time <laughs> I mention this, but I don't buy his performance. I don't think, and I know it's, he's only said a few lines in full in that trailer. In general, he's only said a few lines as Big Boss, but I don't buy him as Big Boss. It's just like I hear Keeper Sutherland, but I don't hear Big Boss. I hear this. I hear one person, but I hear someone. But I see someone completely different. You know, it's again, it's it's the voice. It's inseparable. It, there's a similar thing happening with uh, Thief Four and Stephen Russell. Stephen Russell was the voice of Garrett and Thief for the longest time, but they replaced him with a. Uh, I don't remember. His name is. I'm not even going to say, I'm not even going to remember. So, you know, he, he, Stephen Russell was replaced, and people are cry, out crying this, saying that it's a betrayal, it's it's not the person we want for this. And I don't, and maybe Thief fans are just more petulant than we, the Metal Gear fans, are. Okay, honestly, okay, and I'll do this before we end off the video, because we've been going for 30 minutes already, but I honestly, honestly, I can see this happening in the future. And I do not put this past... Kojima to do so. I honestly could see this having a full reason behind it for future projects. I could see Kojima going back and redoing the original Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. And with that, if he went that route, he would have to have two different voice actors. Because in Metal Gear Solid, or Metal Gear 1 on the MSX, Snake was under the charge, and his commander was Big Boss. And if he does this remake, and I could honestly see him doing this, they would have to have both voice actors. They would have to have David Hayter to voice Snake, and they would have to have another person to voice Big Boss. And they've already got Kiefer Sutherland to do it. I could honestly see him going this route. I could I see get... him building a separation between the two characters. And to me, it makes sense to build a separation between the two characters. And that's something else I've heard, you know, Keeper Sutherland, this the Big Boss isn't a hero anymore. He can't be, he, David Hayer can't be Big Boss anymore because Big Boss ain't a hero anymore. He's a villain now, even though the whole point of the series isn't that these people are heroes. They aren't. They've proven time and again that these people are not the heroes that, uh, that you imagine them to be. So I'm like, I take that argument, I'm like, yeah, totally. But uh, they were never heroes to begin with. Uh, Big Boss as a character was never heroic. He basically killed his mentor because they told him to, and he didn't have any objections because he didn't have a choice. He's a soldier. I, that's his whole job. Even even Solid Snake in four admits he's not a hero. He's a, he's a killer. That's about it. That's all he admits. He's a weapon. He's, you point him to where he's supposed to go and what he's supposed to kill, and he kills. And in that regard, I get that. I get why Kiefer Sutherland would want to do that voice because Jack Bauer as a character is very. <laughs> Jack? One track, mind one mind one track. Yeah, Jack one Bauer as a character was, well, for lack of a better term, Snake. He was a weapon. You pointed him where he was supposed to go, and he did it. Which kind of makes me want to wonder, why didn't you get Kurt Russell? <laughs> <laughs> that oh, would God. make way more sense. I know it would make more sense because of the design of Big Boss. It was designed after Kurt Russell, or his character Snake, in Escape from L.A. I understand that the design was made after him, but still, <laughs> that would just be, it would be humorous, but really, I think that'd be going just a little bit far. That'd be a little meta. <laughs> that would be way too meta. Um, but, you know, I will hold off my judgment on Kiefer Sutherland. I think people that are saying he's doing a great job so far, they're jumping the gun a bit because we've only heard him say like three lines. Yeah, I can't say he's going to do a fantastic job at it. I can't say he's going to do a horrible job. I can't say if I'm going to like him as Snake or hate him as Snake. But at this point, I'm not going to go out and judge and say the game's ruined because Snake's no longer voiced by David Hayter. But to go that route would be to go the route of a petulant Sonic fan or a petulant fan of anyone who bitches because a voice actor changed. Are you implying something there, stranger? Well, okay. <laughs> you yourself have admitted you were being quite petulant when you said these things. It's petulant, but I, but I think I have a reason. It's like complaining because they changed some of the voice actors within Dragon Ball Z when they did Dragon Ball Z Kai, despite the fact that halfway through the first season of Dragon Ball Z, they changed the voice actor for Piccolo. 
I don't think I'm being too petulant, just I want a reason why. Like, Kojima has been very vague about this. He's, he's constantly said, we just wanted to make it a more serious game, and Kiefer Sutherland is the perfect for, per, person for that, because his friend Aviera told him to. But I just, I want a real reason. I want a perfect reason. I want David Hayter to get, I want him to get a reason too, because the dude just got told, you're not coming back. Well. I just I just think it's a fact that I just want closure from from the man himself to tell David Hayter why because David Hayter doesn't even really know. Yeah, well, all I can but say that's it. it's it's the decision of the producers and the creators. Yeah, uh, but before we close off, we should also talk about the characters that showed up just a li- just a little bit. Uh, the characters that showed up that were show- showing up in the game. Uh, Snake, obviously, his his code name is now Punish Snake, which will look yeah. retarded when the game comes out. Like it's a it's a badass name, but at the same time, I can't imagine that being his health bar. <laughs> Punish snake? No, it'll just say snake. Better, because I don't want to see. It was it was bad enough when they changed solid snake to old snake, because that was that was kind of obnoxious. Yeah, or naked snake. No, naked snake made sense because that was his code name. Yeah. But uh, old snake was just a nickname they gave him because he's old now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, she got snake. He shows up. Or big boss. My apologies. Kazura Miller. Uh, Ocelot shows up, of course. He's starting to get his long hair and his mustache. He's looking more and like his the duster Ocelot. jacket. Yep. And his cowboy boots and his spurs are still there, but he's starting to look more like the Ocelot. We all know. And there's Chico coming back, obviously. Chico's there. Paws is there somewhere. Again, I'm still questioning. I, I still want to know where, the, where half of that Peace Walker crew went. <laughs> you mean the ones that had no lines? No, no, everyone had lines in that game. I want to know where Cecile went. I want to know where no. Strange Love went. I want to know where, want to know where Amanda went. I want to know where all these characters went. And then we the, had, the Huey's coming back too. Yeah. Then we had one new character that I can remember that showed up, and I can't even remember what his name was. The guy with the skull mask. Skullface. Yeah, Skullface. <laughs> Duh. But I'm guessing he's probably gonna be either a he's- minor villain or the main villain, one of the two. I think he's going to be a secondary villain because at this point we also need to remember that Zero is still leading Cypher. Yeah. So he's so he's going to be a secondary main villain or he's just going to be a secondary villain outright. Yeah. One of the two. Uh, uh, there's also these the other new characters. Well, I, well, okay. I also said all, all most of the cast of Peace Walkers coming back, Huey Emmerich included. Uh, he's actually got legs now, somewhat. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and, and he's being tortured. Yep. Okay. Uh, and we also have four new characters, I believe. Skullface, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, Quiet, the sniper girl. Crazy who... bikini top girl. People got an uproar when they saw that outfit. Why? Because she's wearing a thong and bra in the desert and leggings. I don't know. It's uh, Metal Gear! <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'm not saying it's ridiculous. I I personally think they should have done a little something a little bit more tasteful, but whatever. That's the way it is. Uh, she is supposedly a snipe. She's a sniper. People have speculated she's the do- the granddaughter of the end. Which, okay. Good where's day. the do- Where's the daughter? Hey, she might be the daughter of the end. Oh my God. You can Who speculate would fuck all. Him? You could speculate all you want. Well, you know he didn't always look like that. Yeah, but that would... Okay, whatever. I'm not even going to question it. I'm not going to speculate. She's just a sniper, okay? And Maybe she's, a she's sni- Sniper Wolf's mom. Who knows? And and there's a theme with the game, obviously. Kaz has lost his, his right arm and his left leg. Uh, so uh, now it's essentially a theme of losing limbs. And that's where the, th- the, the title, The Phantom Pain, comes in. Yeah, um, and there was an issue with his eyes as well. I don't think it was too big an issue because... How would he see at that point? Yeah, uh, uh, Quiet has been spec. Uh, Quiet pretty much confirmed she's a mute, and she's done. And that's because her tongue was cut out. Uh, that's fan speculation, but that's pretty much. I'm just gonna say that's canon. Uh, there's Eli, which oh my god, the speculation for him is off the fucking roof. <laughs> uh, people have said time and again, this is liquid. Which, uh, you know what? I'm, n- I'm not gonna say that's too far off. He yeah. looks almost like him. He's got the, we don't hunt, s- we don't hunt snakes in Afghanistan. 
we hunt jackals. Yeah. Uh, and he's got the jackal necklace. He's got the open shirt, you know, sewing off those sexy 12-year-old abs. <laughs> uh, Is it possible that that's liquid, which means that more than likely you're going to see a young snake show up. Um, I believe a young Hal Emmerich is supposed to be in there somewhere. Uh, you know, you know uh, liquid... Uh, Eli is speculated to be liquid. I don't think it's too far off. Uh, uh, his thing, his pain, is the fact that he pretty much thinks that... In the first game, uh, Liquid thought he was the recessive twin uh, compared to Snake. And in this game, I'm sure he's going to figure out that he might be the recessive twin. Yeah. Which which would lead more to the fact that Snake's going to be in the game and whatever. Uh, so you know that's his pain. The pain is the pain of knowing that he is the weaker of the two. Uh, there's Skull Face, obviously. He looks burned. That's his pain. Yeah. Uh, there's there's Huey who uh, lost his legs working on being born. <laughs> <laughs> lost them being born. So you know he he can't walk, but he's got these little uh, mech mech legs that help him do that. Uh, his pain, obviously, legs. Ocelot, his pain, uh, you know, being uh, being a person that's never really lived his true life. He's always been a someone else. You know, he's never known his mother, never known his father, for that matter. You know, he's he's just a broken man that lives a lie. Uh, One of these days, he's going to lose an arm. That, too. That, that could also be another thing. Uh, <laughs> there's Code Talker, who is uh, this new old guy character. Yeah. Uh, he is. They speculated he's a, a, a an Indian, a Native American, uh, and that he's going to be blind, which makes sense because most old people and most old wise men are blind. And it would make sense for him to be Native American because of the times during that whole time frame. Our code talkers were Native Americans. Yes. Uh, there's also those who do not exist, which which uh, people. Which uh, obviously shows Psycho Mantis, who burned down his village, uh, killed his father, and, you know, that's his pain. Uh, there's Volgan, who shows up via Apparition. Uh, he is he is the pain of not having life. He's dead. And also, I guess, Ry uh, Rykov, I guess, whatever. <laughs> um, there's also... And then there's those four guys, who I've heard speculated are actually the Cobra unit. Yeah. A reborn Cobra unit who are now living uh, zombies, essentially, which is, which would also tie into their pain too. Uh, people also said there might, there might be an appearance by the boss. Who knows? Who knows? She showed up, Peace Walker, in one shape or form. Flashbacks and AI apparently. And AI. <laughs> uh, and then who else? Is that is that everyone? I think so. I think I think that's everyone. Oh, and Chico apparently has a jack, a headphone jack in his stomach now. Of course. So he can listen to his music. His Walkman. <laughs> That's one final thing I want to talk about real quick. Uh, the, t the trailer almost ends with, uh, with Snake. What looks like he's putting pressure on a wound that Chico received in the neck, which I can only assume is a, was a bullet or something like that. Uh, no one, everyone said it's either him choking Chico or he's uh, saving him from death whatever that's going to play a major role and i'm sure that's going to if amanda's still alive at this point uh it's going to play a role in their relationship if she shows up yeah uh and the one final impactful scene uh where snake gives a blood diamond to a bunch of african children in a in a jail cell and then shoots them pretty much saying that yes i'm not fucking around anymore this game is serious yeah so if nothing yes. else, the videos are going to be in here somewhere. This is going to extend the video to uh, about an hour long when I put those two trailers in there, but fuck it, whatever. This was pretty long. <laughs> yes, it was. I was trying to keep it from being so, but hey, that's what happens. And we kept on track most of the time. <laughs> so, this will be TOG. And Mr. Firebird, and, you know, Phantom Pain. And we're both looking forward to it, as you can obviously tell one way or another, we're looking forward to it. There's a new weapon that they're developing. It's supposed to be better than Metal Gear. Of course. But, yes. If we continue going on things that are supposedly doing this will last all night long. <laughs> yeah. We could talk for hours, but <laughs> we'll save that for the eventual playthroughs that will come on my channel. If you want to go see it. Or on my channel if I get a PlayStation 4 and I immediately start uploading my run-throughs. Yeah! Yeah! Uploading it live from PlayStation 4, bitches! Which they could do the same thing on Xbox One, but whatever. Alright, but yeah. 
We'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> yeah, see ya. Bye. Adieu. Adieu.